Mr. and Mrs. Noonan, I can't tell you how excited I am about this adoption. You know you're getting one of my all-time favorites here. Of course, they are all my favorites. <laughs> but nothing gives me more joy than finding a wonderful home for these precious children. And I know this is going to be a perfect fit. We do too, Miss Lamb. If you don't mind, could you stop by my office for a few more minutes before you go? Certainly. Ivy, hurry up! We're gonna be late for our rehearsal again, and you know how OCD Mr. Fisheltree is about us being punctual. Holly, don't you just love these new high tops I got from my sponsors? They sparkle, and they have red and green laces. Love! Um, I could really care less. Don't be jelly. Be jolly, Holly. <laughs> Ugh, come on. Hey, you guys, what are you doing? Mr. Fisheltree sent me to find you. Did you forget about our practice? Felix, check out my shoes. They sparkle. Don't you just love? Holly is so jelly. Whatever. Come on. Looks like we made it just in time. Have you ever seen anything more pitiful in your life? This place sure needs your decorative touch, sister. Can't nobody fill a room with the spirit of Christmas like you can, Carol. Well, you know how I hate to brag about my extraordinary, God-given, almost supernatural-like decorating talents. But like Mama always said, I do seem to have the gift. Well, I'm glad we get to fix this place up for the kids. Best gift I'll be getting this year. Me too. There's no greater joy in my grown-up adult life than getting to come here and focus all my attention on these sweet youngins. <gasps> Is that the dance revolution we over there? Hark the herald angels sing. Todd, stop it. That don't belong to you. What if you break it? The only breaking I'm going to be doing is break dancing. <laughs> Hello, I'm Beth Laham, director of the Children's Home. You must be the Loggins. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm Yule, and that's my brother Todd over there, uh, getting things set up. Quit. And I'm his sister, Carol. Oh, how cute! Yule, Todd, and Carol! Loggins! What clever marketing for your business. Uh, well, yeah, I guess I did do some pretty smart shopping at the market for these Christmas decorations. Found some real bargains, girl. Oh, no, I just meant, you know, your names, Yule, Todd, Carol. Well, never mind. Yes, Carol, let's see what you bought. Hey, y'all, they got the Christmas version dance we... <laughs> Pay no mind to my brother, Miss Laham. yeah. Since he ain't got a mind, it'd just be a waste of time. I heard that! Good! Now cut it out, you two. Well, I've heard wonderful things about your work. I was delighted that you were available to come and help us out this year. They got a dance mix version of Jingle Bells, I Heard the Bells, and something called Foom Foom Foom. I I'm not sure what a foom is, but the other two are some of my favorites. I'll tell you what a fume is. It's the awful smell your crazy brother gives off when he goes all week without taking a shower. Well, I'll leave you three to get busy. Let me know if you need anything. Todd, ain't nobody got time for that.
Praise me now, the Lord above, sing foom, foom, foom. Praise me now, the Lord above, sing foom, foom, foom. For upon this day of morn, the wondrous Son of God was born in a manger, poor and lowly, laid a blessed babe most holy. Boom, 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 boom. We gotta get a move on, boys. The kids will be getting here any minute. Uh, more like this minute. Well, if you hadn't wasted so much time with your crazy dancing. I'm so excited about our Christmas concert. I've got to find the perfect outfit to match my new shoes. Uh, we'll all be wearing the same thing, Ivy. And it's a Christmas concert, not a fashion show. Um, you are so the Grinch trying to steal my Christmas right now. Well, hello there, young'uns. Merry Christmas. My name is Carol, and over there's Yule and Todd. They're my brothers. Hey, Miss Carol, it's so great to meet you. I'm Ivy, and this is my BFF, the Grinch. Oops, sorry. I mean, Holly. And I'm Felix. Nice to meet you, Miss Carol. Felix? Is that like Spanish or something? Like in that song, Felix Navidad, Felix Navidad. Wait, Carol, are you singing my most favorite Christmas song without me? Remember, we used to sing that as a duet at the VFW Christmas Karaoke Competition. Do I remember? We only took home the Honorable Mentions Award four years in a row. Felix Navidad, Felix Navidad. I'm telling you, Carol, we need to audition for The Voice. Everybody says so. So you said Holly, Ivy, and Felix? You got it. Uh-huh, that's yes, right. Yes, sir. And you're Mr. Yule? Yes, siree. And I heard some mighty fine singing when we were outside a while ago. Sounded like a heavenly host of angels. Was that y'all? Yes, sir. We were practicing for our Christmas concert. Yes! And guess what? Our director, Mr. Fisheltree, gave me a big solo in one of the songs. I'm so excited. But it's also really scary, you know, playing by yourself in front of so many people. And I think everybody's getting jealous because I get to be featured as a solo artist. Well, since you'll be playing a kazoo solo on All I Want for Christmas is my two front teeth, I think you're going to be okay. And guess what? I checked, and nobody's jealous. See what I mean? It's so hard being famous. People turn on you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like me and Todd and Carol had to come check that out. What about you, young man? You gonna be singing or playing the kazoo? <laughs> um, as if. He's never taken kazoo lessons. Ivy, ugh. I'm just gonna be singing. Don't let him fool you, Mr. Yule. Felix has got one of the best voices in our choir. He's just really shy about it. Guess what? Guess what? I wrote a song for the concert. Um, you wrote it? Well, these two helped a little with the lyrics, and Mr. Fisheltree wrote the music for it, but it was all my idea. Speaking of songwriting, I'm prone to do a little composting myself. Oh, no. Here we go. Ivy? I can totally relate to that jealousy thing you were talking about. Anyways, 
one of my best loved masterpieces is all about my deep abiding affection for the Christmas season and how heartbroken I am each year when it's all over. <laughs> Sorry, it already hurts to think about it. But one day I said to myself, Todd, which is what I call myself, it is a shame and a disgrace that with as much joy and love as the Christmas season brings to the world, that we have to wait a whole year to celebrate it again. You might as well get his guitar, because he ain't gonna stop. Ugh, what poured forth from the pits of my soul after that is a song that is truly to be revered as one of the great Christmas classics of our time. You... You do the honor on the verses, and Carol and I'll grab the hominy parts like we always do. Here we go. Twelve days of Christmas have never been enough for me. Closer it gets to the 25th, my heart just wants to scream. Now I don't know why we have to quit. Celebrate Christmas on the 25th and wait another year till we get to do it again. I wish it could be Christmas Eve constantly. Call constantly. I wish we could sing Winter Wonderland in the sky. I love that Winter Wonderland. I wish December 24th could just go on forever. Put decorations away And is it really so wrong That I like to have my own weekly Christmas parades And I don't care if you think I'm weird Wearing red and green every day of the year It's what I gotta do not to lose my Christmas cheer I really like your song, Mr. Yule. Well, thank you, Felix. You know, me and those two sure have had a lot of good times together. We get on each other's nerves sometimes, but we get over things quick and move on because we love each other. And ain't nothing like family, son. Yes, sir. I'll bet. Uh, oh, my goodness, Felix. Look at me going on and on about my family like that, and I'm sorry, buddy. It's okay. I like to hear people talk about what it's like to be in a family. Maybe one day I'll have one. Say, you want to grab a seat here and help me sort through this tangle mess of lights? Sure. So, Felix, uh, if you're okay with me asking, what happened to your family? I don't know. I've been in the foster system all my life. No one ever told me what happened to my parents or why they gave me up. Goodness. I just can't imagine that. I've lived with a few foster families, but no one ever wanted to adopt me. And the older you get, the harder it gets. Most people want babies. 
I thought there was a family that wanted me a few months ago, but I guess they changed their mind. We kind of have our own family here. I've known Holly and Ivy most of my life. I guess they're kind of like my sisters. That's wonderful. They seem like really sweet girls. Yeah, and Miss Laham is really great. She's always trying to plan special things for us. Oh, she told us. And I can tell she loves y'all very much. So tell me, what sort of things is Mr. Felix into? Sports, books, music? Did I hear the girl say you wrote a song for the Christmas show? Yes, sir. They helped me with the words, and Mr. Fisheltree helped write the music. Well, mercy me, boy, that's great. I really like to sing. And I've always wanted to learn to play guitar. That one Todd played was really cool. Yeah, he loves that guitar. Had it all his life. And he's really pretty good. You know, he teaches lessons. He does? Maybe he can teach me. But it would be hard. We don't have a guitar here, and I couldn't teach the lessons. Well, you just never know, Felix. Anything's possible. So what's your song about? Kind of what I was talking about earlier. Since we don't have families of our own, we're just trying to make the best of it with each other. Miss Laham always says we have to choose to enjoy Christmas. So the song is about choosing to have a really fun and crazy Christmas. Man, I can't wait to hear that. As you can tell, we might get this crazy. All right, you two. Time to quit your rap kitchen and get to work. Well, the Christmas queen has spoken. You better get with it. Let's talk some more later. That's cool. Girls, I brought some of my most favorite Christmas sweaters for anyone who has a good sense to snatch them up. They are the to die for the work. Look at here. Oh, Ivy, I think we just found the perfect outfit to match your shoes. Really? You think so? Awesome! Thank you, Mr. Carol. I am so to our choral director, Mr. Artie Fisheltree. Oh, Miss Lamb, you are way too kind. I'm not an actual choral director. I just substitute as one occasionally. But I'm not nearly as high maintenance as those real ones. They can be so prickly with their dry senses of humor. The children need to rehearse this year for tonight's program. Is that okay? Why, sure. He'll give us just the right inspiration while we're working. Places, everyone. Time is wasting and we need to get this puppy whipped into perfect shape.
way to go. That's all that home. was excellent, children. This is going to be the best Christmas concert ever. Guess what? I've got some refreshments set up for you in the cafeteria, so let's go wait there while the Loggins finish up in here. That just hit me right here. We only have a few more days to get cray-cray, and then it's over again. <laughs> Todd, stop it. Somebody needs to throw a stock and a candy at your head. Mr. Yule, you still need me to help with the lights? Sure, son. I, I'd love that. So, what you hoping to get for Christmas this year? We always get a bunch of gifts from churches and different groups. We take turns picking them out of a pile, so you never really know what you're going to get. So you don't ever get a gift pick just for you? No, sir, but that's okay. It's not about getting a bunch of gifts anyways, but it is fun to watch everybody start tearing them open. I'll bet. Hey, I know a gift that was given just for you. Really? What? Jesus. He's who the whole season is about anyway. That's what Miss Laham is talking about. And did you know he would have still come even if you'd been the only person on the earth? You know much about Jesus? A little. I've heard stories about him at Sunday school. Do you know why he came? Well, Miss Laham says he came to save us from our sins. She tells us that he loves us and cares about us. He sure does, son. Can I ask you something? Anything. Sometimes I wonder, if Jesus loves me so much, why do I live here? Why didn't my parents want me? Why didn't he let me have a family, like you and the kids I know at school? That's a tough one, Felix, and I really don't know how to answer you. There's just a lot of crazy things that happen to us in this world that we can't explain or understand, but it all goes back to what we were talking about earlier, making choices. You got to make a choice to believe that the Lord loves you and is always working things together for your good no matter what. It don't seem like it's a good thing that you're here and you don't have a family, but you never know what Jesus might have waiting for you down the road. This time next year, you might be adopted and living with your very own family. I know it's kind of weird, but you know what I'd really love to get for Christmas? More than anything, a last name. I got dropped off here when I was a baby with nothing except a piece of paper that said Felix. I don't even know when my birthday is. Miss Laham made it the day that I got here. My goodness. Whatever age you are, you're mighty mature for it. You know what, Felix? Come to think of it, we are all adopted. You've heard that verse, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's right. God made a choice to send Jesus to earth to show us all how much he loves us. Jesus made a choice to die on a cross for our sins so we could live with him forever in heaven. When he died and rose again, he made a way for all of us to be adopted into his family the family of God. And that's where we have another choice to make. What's that? The choice to become a Christian. Have you done that yet? Or do you know how? Not really. It's just been kind of hard for me to believe that Jesus would do all that for me. Well, he did. And we can wonder all day about the whys and the why nots, but we got to believe that it's all true. Once we do that, we start seeing things a whole lot differently. I appreciate you being so honest with me. The Lord loves for us to tell him exactly what's in our hearts. He can handle it. <laughs> he knows it anyway, so there ain't no sense in trying to hide anything from him. Maybe we could talk to Jesus about all this right now. Yeah, I like that.
All right, children, settle down. Yule, may I ask a favor of you? Certainly. I would love for the kids to hear the Christmas story before the concert tonight to set the right tone for the evening. Would you mind reading it to them? I have a Bible right here. I would be honored. Thank you so much. Children, this is Mr. Ewell. He and his family have been here all day getting things ready for our program tonight. I've asked him to read the Christmas story about Jesus' birth to help us remember what tonight is really all about. All righty then. This here is a story of Jesus' birth in the Bible, found in the book of Luke, chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and respecting the child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there's no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appear with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. That was beautiful, Yule. Thank you so much. I didn't know you were coming. I know we haven't been here in a while. It's a long story, but we'll tell you later. But we had to come see our favorite boy and give you a Christmas present, one that's just for you. Really? Where is it? Well, it was kind of hard to wrap, so we better wait till after the program. Okay, that's cool. Ooh, what is it with all this gluten-free, all-natural blah, blah, blah? Ugh, it tastes terrible. Aren't there any Little Debbie cakes, ding-dongs, Twinkies? You know, real food? Sorry, Artie. I'll go see what else I can find. I have a bottle of water here if you need it. Oh, I never need water, Miss Lamb. <laughs> no worries. We need to run through one more song before we open the doors. Another one that I helped Felix write, but we've kept this one a secret. Uh, you wrote one without us? Felix, are you ready? Yes, sir. Christmas feel like with a family making memories decorating a tree what does Christmas feel like when you've always known there's a place where you belong what does Christmas feel Just any kid What does 
job, Felix. There won't be a dry eye in the house after that. That was awesome. I could not be prouder of you, son. Thanks, Mr. Yule. I enjoyed talking to you today. Me too. Between you accepting Jesus and then singing that song, I'd say my Christmas is complete. Except for one thing. Hey, Felix, you was telling me you wanted to learn to play the guitar, but you ain't got one. Well, I happen to have this here extra one, so I figured you might as well have it. You'll need it for your lessons. What? Your lessons! We'll start up first of the year if that works for you. But... That's my gift to you, Felix. A year's worth of lessons with the master. Well, I don't like to brag. Then don't. And here's mine, honey. Thank goodness I found one more in the box. Everyone, I have a very special announcement to make. We all love Felix, and most of you know that he's been at the home longer than anyone living here. But tonight will be his last night. Mr. and Mrs. Noonan finished their adoption process today and are now officially his parents. His family. I thought you changed your mind. You mean it? For real? For real. Forever, son. I've always had a fascination with the meaning of names, and it's always been important to me that you all know what your names mean. Felix... I've told you many times that your name means favored and successful. Well, when I researched your new last name, I discovered that the name Noonan means belonging to the beloved. I believe the Lord is telling you that his favor has always been on you and he has given you great success here. And tonight, he is giving you what you wanted most in the world, a last name a family, a place to belong. Well, buddy, you got two families now. You got the Noonans here, and when you accepted Jesus a while ago, you became part of God's family. And you've always belonged to Him. I know. I can't believe it. It's so awesome. 
Okay, places, everyone. Uh, just so you know, I'll be providing some pre-lit, <laughs> I mean pre-show entertainment as the masses enter. <clears throat> Artificial tree, hey, artificial tree, why does everyone uh, envy me? Hey, how you doing? Hey, where you from? How's that part? Artificial tree? Can I play my kazoo on this too? <laughs> Ivy, yeah. <laughs> 